$500 Pixel 7a doesn't make any sense. Or does it? The Pixel 7a was almost fully leaked before it was announced. And part of those leaks is that the Pixel 7a would be the last Pixel A series device. Now, along with that, now along with the leaks of the Pixel 7a being the last A device, we also had leaks that it was going to have a $50 price hike. And now that it's out, we see that it is $500. Recently, every morning, right after I wake up, I try to take at least a 15 minute walk, listen to some jazz music and just clear my head. It's been a great habit, lost a little bit of weight. You should try it. This app right here gives me unlimited storage for Google Photos. This pixel can back up unlimited photos and videos at no charge. Now I think that that $50 price hike and the fact that it's the last Pixel A series device are linked for a very specific reason. See, it wasn't that Tensor G1 was a bad SOC. It just wasn't a very well optimized SOC. And because of optimizations, it's not going to age well. And although on my wife's Pixel 6a, it's fine for what she needs, I would definitely say that there's room for improvement, not really in performance, but for efficiency. And aging well, I think is actually going to be kind of the direction that Google goes with their more budget line of devices. See, the reason that I'm so sure that Google is worrying about efficiency and whatnot is because maybe the most popular comment or the most popular thing regarding the Pixel 7a was, why don't you just get a Pixel 7 or a used Pixel 6? And I think that while a used Pixel 6 is gonna be better in a lot of ways, I think that the average consumer looking to get a budget device is likely gonna want slightly better battery life than what a used Pixel 6 could offer. On the other hand, Tensor G2, I think it's gonna age a lot better. And that's probably why Google will stop selling the A series and continue just selling the base Pixel 7. Another option that many people don't seem to have considered is that it's totally possible that Google is going to follow Apple's footsteps with what Apple does with the iPhone SE model. Apple doesn't release a new iPhone SE every year, and they really shouldn't. The same way, I don't really know if launching a Pixel A series every year is that great of an idea, especially with the fact that the Pixel 7a is basically giving you a flagship SOC. It's giving you a really, really good camera experience with tons of features. And with how Tensor G2 has ultimately aged, I don't think people looking to buy a budget device are going to be upgrading their budget device every year. And it doesn't make sense for anyone to upgrade their budget device every year when you could just buy a flagship from last year or just wait for two years to get a more budget-oriented device. Either way, it seems like the Pixel 7a is kind of an indication of what Pixel wants or what Google wants to do. I'm gonna go buy my wife a brand new MacBook Air M2 right now, let's go. In Vietnamese, Tao or Tao is Apple. Tao store, Apple store, but like obviously the bootleg Vietnamese version of it. Deplom. So originally, I was going to get an M2 MacBook Pro and my wife was going to get the M1 MacBook Pro. But with the M3 chip likely being on the three nanometer process instead of the five nanometer process, it doesn't make sense for me to get an M2, my M1 Pro device right now. Totally fine. This is like $700 cheaper than getting a used MacBook Pro and it works just as well for all of the needs that my wife has. 
And honestly, the fact that you can buy an extended warranty from Apple on a used device, as long as it's still within the Apple warranty, means that used Apple devices are some of the better deals, some of the more reliable deals uh, that you can get in just tech in general. And even though I don't like recommending Apple products a lot of the time, even though I don't like, (laughs) even though I don't enjoy recommending Apple products because they're oftentimes not reliable, the people that don't want to deal with it, it's really unbeatable. Check this out. Used MacBook Air, 22 and a half million. It's a little bit less than like 900 bucks. I still have five and a half months left on the warranty. I'll be able to get Apple Care Plus for it so that my wife has what is essentially a sealed computer. I don't have to worry about cleaning it. And uh, hopefully it'll last her the next eight to 10 years like her previous Windows laptop did. But back to talking about the Pixel 7a and where exactly this leaves us. The Pixel 7a is so incredibly close to the Pixel 7. Uh, The new sensor, actually the 64 megapixel sensor that's using is not a Samsung sensor. I was wrong in my predictions video. It's a Sony sensor. The screen looks like it's slightly partially dimmer dimmer than the screen on the Pixel 7, which is already around 1,000 nits of brightness. Uh, And it's got 5 watt wireless charging instead of uh, the 23 watt if you're using a Pixel stand. Otherwise, you have to use an EPPS, Extended Programmable Power Supply Qi wireless charger. It's the one that Samsung uses. You get 15 watts out of it. You only get 5 watts with the Pixel 7a, which I think would be fine for people that want to use it overnight. Probably not great if you want to get fast charging, but Qi wireless charging is more about convenience and always kind of just topping your phone up instead of necessarily fast charging. And there doesn't really seem to be that much of a reason to buy a Pixel 7 over a Pixel 7a. Um, And I don't think that most people would necessarily care about the plastic back or the fact that it's only got 18 watt charging instead of the 24 watt charging. And all that to say that Google has made a really, really great entry level phone. The problem is that they are charging more than their prior device. And with the track record that we've seen, it's probably going to be a $400 phone, if not a sub $400 phone within the next four to five months. Um, Meaning that you would be able to get a, a Pixel 7, possibly used or open box or refurbished for even less than that. And the fact that Google has such a good relationship and program with iFixit, the overall design of the Pixel 7 being extremely friendly to use or repair. Um, essentially, you take a hair dryer and you pry the screen off. If you break the screen uh, and you can put a new screen on, changing the battery, pretty much the same thing. Once you have the screen off, uh, there's some pull tabs for the battery and it comes out. So repairability and overall long-term kind of usage of the Pixel 7 um, looks to be pretty good, which makes a used Pixel 7 a very, very compelling option because battery replacements are so easy, along with Google caring so much about just kind of battery health together, or altogether, I should say. And so the Pixel 7a seems like it's a confused device Um, that said, In America and in a lot of Western countries, we don't have this huge influx of Chinese market cell phones that have flagship killer specs. And for the most part, uh, any of the mid-range Xiaomi devices uh, that have come out over the past couple of years, um, Oppo, BBK, a little bit similar, but really Xiaomi has kind of made the most headlines with uh, manufacturing defects, part failures, Uh, issues with like motherboards dying, issues with components dying. Um, And so if you want to get a mid-range device, a device that's, uh, let's say, sub $600, and you want that device to last you two and a half, three years, you want software updates, Pixel 7 is a great choice. And new, right, the Pixel 7a is going to get Android 16 will be the last time that it gets an update uh, and you'll have four years of security updates. I think that it's a device 
that is just a no brainer purchase for a lot of people, right? And it makes it a really easy device to recommend. I recommended that my father get a Pixel 5a 5G. He's had it now for two and a half years. He loves it. It's great, right? And it served him extremely well. He still gets fantastic battery life with it because Google has implemented so many of these battery saving parameters and because they are so conservative about their battery charging tech and the like temperature that they allow their batteries to get up to. Um, and so if you're looking for just a no brainer mid range device that you can buy brand new, that's going to get you three generations of Android updates, four generations of uh, bug fixes, the Pixel 7a doesn't really have much competition. Samsung will get you better uh, OS update support, but you're gonna be dealing with the A54 that has a Axios SOC, depending upon where in the world you live, maybe an S21 FE would be a good option. But again, in some places around the world, the S21 FE has the Axios chip, which is really not a great option for a lot of people. Uh, Tensor, on the other hand, doesn't have as many of the same pitfalls uh, and Google is really not focusing on performance. So the Pixel 7a is a great phone to recommend to tons of people with a great camera experience and flagship or close to flagship performance. And it's going to have all of the optimizations that the rest of the Pixel devices have, like being able to use the ultra wide camera in Instagram or the telephoto camera in Instagram or Snapchat. And those are things that tons of people really care about. And so if you, if you are trying to recommend a device to a non tech nerd and you just want something that you can suggest and they're going to enjoy, Pixel 7a without a doubt. For everyone else, Pixel 7, replace the battery yourself if need be, refurb Pixel 7, great option if you have a little bit more money to spend. Pixel 7 Pro, my Pixel 7 Pro gets better battery life now than it did on day one. Performance is fantastic, buttery smooth. I understand that some people have issues with fast charging and they want faster charging tech. Depending upon your lifestyle, that might not be an issue. Overall, Pixel 7a, Pixel line, outside of the Pixel Fold, shaping up to be great. But what do you think? And do you like MacBooks? Or are you a Mac hater? Let me know in the comment section. Peace.